Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, firstly, there is the, the fact that they've broken his sign, and, and then there is the point of the woman who approaches him with a tambourine screaming, repent. <laughs> now, you, you actually might not have heard it properly. We had to bleep out an awful lot of that because she was saying repent, and then another word, which I can't possibly say now. Um, but this is very interesting. I've often been criticised for comparing this movement to a new kind of religion. But if they're going to go around screaming repent at people, then surely I've got a point. I mean, they may as well be throwing holy water at him and shouting the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> but there's another interesting story here regarding the way that this was then subsequently reported in the media. Now, the Associated Press published this image of Gesualdi, Vito Gesualdi, who we've just seen there. And uh, given that this was, by the way, this was the Associated Press, this is the go-to source for many other mainstream media outlets. And this image was widely reproduced, but the caption was really interesting, right? So the caption said, comedian and videographer Vito Gesualdi screams profanities as he engages with peaceful protesters begging him to leave. But that didn't happen, did it? Right? We just saw it. That just didn't happen, right? They, they weren't peaceful protesters. They're smashing up his placard, right? The woman with the tambourine wasn't begging him to leave. She was up in his face, screaming at him to repent, like some kind of cross between Vinnie Jones and Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> and then, in a thread on Twitter, journalist Jesse Single uh, pinpointed the precise moment this image was taken to check the claim by the Associated Press that Jesualdi was, quote, screaming profanities. And here's what he was actually saying at the moment that image was taken. He was saying, I'm just here to say that jokes are funny, people. Dave Chappelle's a funny guy. I love Dave. I don't know why all the violence. I don't know why all the hate. I just love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, woo. <laughs> OK, so this is actually it's quite a serious breach of journalistic conduct. So the Associated Press must have known that he wasn't screaming profanities, but they went ahead and said it anyway. And they did eventually issue a correction but only because they were called out. So, anyway, there's a lot to unpack. So joining me to talk about this event is the man himself from that viral video, Vito Gesualdi. Thank you so much for joining us on Free Speech Nation. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's a lot of love for you here, uh, Vito. Can you just talk to us a bit about your reasoning for, for going to the protest? Did, were you not aware that this might be deemed contentious, that there might be this kind of reaction? Well, I mean, we knew that it might be controversial. It was me and my uh, co-host, Dick Masterson. We have a podcast called The Biggest Problem in the Universe. And I called him up the night before, and I said, we're comedians. And th let's be real, this is a protest. They say it's for trans rights, but it's also a protest uh, against comedy. I mean, they're not protesting some vile hate monger. They're protesting Dave Chappelle, you know, one of the greatest comedians of all time. And I said, I feel like as comedians, it's we, we, someone needs to show up to represent the other side to say, listen, you guys have all your rights and we want you, you know, to live your lives with happiness. But, uh, but the fact that you've pinpointed comedy as the, as the biggest problem in your, in your lives is frankly an absurdity to us. So uh, we answered with what we thought was our own absurdity, which was signs that say we like jokes and Dave is funny. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> 
Did you Apparently get any opportunity to upset. talk? I mean, what we just saw in the footage is quite alarmist, right? Did you get any opportunity to actually have a conversation with any of these people? And could you, could you reason with them? Or, or, or am I right that it felt... Because watching it, it feels like a kind of religious zeal, almost like they, they've just lost their minds. There's a small number of people who tried to have conversations with us, and I think we did have some, some uh, good conversations with some people. But a lot of people there, I mean, yeah, it is becoming... Yeah, a religious zeal is a great way to describe it. Uh, one writer, you know, a former, uh, you know, marched in uh, the Pride Marches, 80s, 90s, you know, a longtime uh, homosexual writer said, we have become the religious right that we used to fight against. Uh, you know, he showed the tambourine lady, you know, as the main picture for his article. He's like, what? Repent? What are we doing, people? <laughs> you you kind of have to agree with them all. What do you think we can do about this? I mean, I was always under yeah. the impression that things in America were a bit better, and I'm, that's based on very limited experience. I was in Los Angeles for a while, and I saw one show, and I was like, comedians are actually pushing the boundaries still. They're, still, they're not really worried about offending people anymore. But do you think this is an issue that is, that is affecting comedy the way you perform, perhaps? Is it having any impact at all? 100%. Now, I'm lucky. I'm an independent, you know, comedian, or I make my money online. I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Vito, and I have my own small, dedicated audience that's able to fund what I do, and it's great, you know, but I looked. I mean, Los Angeles is the epicenter of comedy in America, and me and my buddy Dick were the only two comedians standing up for comedy at this event. We expected there would at least be a handful of other guys. But, you know, we have to realize a lot of these guys working in L.A., OK, maybe they got a job writing on a show. You know, they're getting booked at clubs. They, they don't want to mess with their livelihood because they know the mob can very quickly get them canceled if they say one wrong thing or do one wrong thing. So yeah. comedy, yeah, people are holding their tongues out here and it, it is a tragedy. We're losing a lot of good comedy because of it. But then people, people will say that, you know, well, but look at Dave Chappelle. He says exactly what he wants. He's not being censored. You know, he can do this. So, so, and they'll say, therefore, that this idea of cancel culture, this idea of this threat to free speech is a bit of a myth, that we're kind of making it up. What would you say to that? Dave Chappelle is too big to cancel at this point. I mean, if Dave Chappelle wants a Netflix special, they're not going to say, no, don't make us $40 million, whatever it is. Uh, the, pro the thing is that these, these uh, activists know that, so what they want to do is cancel the small up and coming guys. They want to be like, OK, well, we can't stop Dave, but let's put checks and balances in place to make sure nobody else can joke about this kind of thing. And that's what I think they're trying to do at Netflix. I've got to ask you about what happened with the Associated Press, because I actually couldn't believe that, because it just, I mean, I understand that sometimes the press get it wrong and they have to retract, right? But that just looked like an out-and-out -out lie. I mean, it, it, it couldn't be any, much, any further from the truth. Even the image they chose of you was deliberately chosen so that it could be interpreted as though you were the antagonist. What do you make of all this? I mean, it feels like there, I mean, there are media outlets that go into this and they've picked which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side. And here, uh, I guess they couldn't find anybody else to use as their example of the wrong side. So they went, well, he's a big, fat, white guy. He looks kind of angry. He'll be a good <laughs> stand-in for that. And then just make up some crazy things about me yelling obscenities. I'm a very nice guy. I don't yell obscenities at people. I mean, you really have to get under my skin. I mean, I guess breaking my stuff, but I, maybe I should have been more angry than I was. Yeah, but well, I was surprised. I, I didn't, didn't go in there with the intention of being angry. You seemed very uh, restrained. I mean, given that someone had just broken your property and you were still making jokes, I thought that was really admirable. But was there any part of you that was slightly frightened or slightly worried about your personal safety in that situation? Well, that man who yelled, he's got a weapon, uh, we've discovered, is a big Netflix writer currently working on a reboot of, of a big show. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen there, but, yeah, you get a little worried. I mean, I've been to protests before. It's yelling, he's got a weapon, is a very clear signal of, hey, mob, beat that guy up. Uh, that's If you look, I'm looking behind me when he says that, like, is anyone behind me? Because they always come from behind. They'll tackle you. They'll knock you to the ground. And as I always say, I mean, I'm in L.A., the LAPD. I love them. God bless their hearts. But they hear he's got a weapon, and they're, they're pulling that sidearm out, and you got two in your chest. So... Thankfully, it makes, it nobody makes was around nervous, to pick it? up on his he's got a weapon accusation. It does make me nervous. Yes, absolutely. Yeah.
Do you think that there's... I mean, one of the, the things about this story which I find very fascinating is that the uh, co-CEO of Netflix, uh, Ted Sarandos, I think his name is, he came out initially and said, no, we are going to defend Dave Chappelle's freedom of speech. He should be able to say what he wants. We do not believe that there is a direct correlation between jokes that are told on TV and real-world violence because, of course, the activists are claiming that there is. The pressure from activists made him retract and he did this very sort of grovelling apology about four days later saying, actually, uh, no, I do accept. I should have listened to people's lived experience more and I do accept that there is a relationship between jokes and real-world violence. D doesn't that tell us that actually the activists are winning? They're so scary, in fact, that it's much easier for people to just capitulate. That's really what it is, is that people choose the, you know, I want an easy life over taking a stand for anything. I'm an idiot. I go, you know what? I'm never going to have a big career in Hollywood, especially not after today. So let's just <laughs> go out there and defend Dave Chappelle. And the fact that I'm now on probably every Hollywood blacklist for standing up for the, one of the greatest comedians of all time, I accept it. The world, I'm a comedian. I see the absurdities of the world and the absurdity of being banned from everywhere for standing up for what I love. Fine, cancel me. I can't, I can't do anything else. But it's odd, isn't it, as well, that they went after Dave Chappelle. And there's something about the optics of a, a, a group of predominantly white middle-class people screaming against a black comic. It just, it, I, I just find that in of itself quite astonishing. And it did strike me that I don't think they watched his show properly, or at least I don't think they listened to it. No, they definitely did not listen to it. I mean, half the people critiquing it are like, well, how come he doesn't joke about any other groups? And you're like, bro, in the special, he's talking about space Jews and whatever else. I mean, he covers a lot of ground in there. So, yes, and it, yeah, he's not, he's not afraid not to talk listening. about different race and different minorities, but it, I think it comes down to a lack of trust all of a sudden. This is a new thing, isn't it? That where, Whereas a comedian used to be able to joke about these things and the audience would trust that they're coming from a good place. They're not coming from a place of hostility or bigotry or prejudice. But now the inst instantaneous assumption is that they must be trying to spread hate. And if they think that, they can't know anything about Dave Chappelle, surely. It's all assumptions, you know, across the political aisle, and it's the same of what happened to me. They see me, and I'm not, you know, marching on their side, which, you know, immediately means I'm a hate monger, I'm a bigot, when really I'm just a goofy guy who's out here going, I like Dave Chappelle. My sign said jokes are funny. I mean, I could not think of a less offensive message. <laughs> it's actually a very dumb message when you, when you put it into perspective. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, people really, uh, victimhood is the, is the most important virtue of the day. It's how you get press. It's how you get people on your side. And everybody wants to be the victim. And uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't try to make people into victims. I'm just trying to be funny. And do you ever get the sense from your audiences uh, that people are nervous about the things you joke about? And do you think, have you ever at any point uh, censored yourself out of a concern for the way it might be received? Uh, I have absolutely censored myself. I mean, obviously, the norms change as time goes on and certain jokes, which used to be OK. You go, I understand why, you know, now we've evolved a bit. That's one of the great things about comedy is it brings us, I think, to better truths is that with topics that we are uncomfortable about, if it's trans issues, homosexuality, whatever, people who maybe were uncomfortable with that topic gradually kind of learn through comedy to get comfortable with it and talk about it more. Um, and But I do have to self-censor. I mean, as a guy, I'm on YouTube. I know you were talking about social platform rules. If I say the wrong thing, they can kick me off. And if they kick me off YouTube, there goes half my income overnight. So we're always watching our back. And, and again, we might say something where we go, well, that's just clearly a joke. I mean, I have to rely on some moderator who was trained in an afternoon to understand what satire is. They don't know what satire is at YouTube. They really don't get it. So... It's a fine line that all us comedians are walking. It's, it's very tough times. And can I just ask, finally, do you have any kind of sympathy with, with the protesters insofar as, you know, for people from marginalised groups, it isn't pleasant to hear what they perceive, what, rightly or wrongly, what they perceive to be an attack. So do you understand where they're coming from on a, on a human level? Absolutely. I'm a big proponent of trans issues. I, I, I love trans people. I really do. And I understand that this is a community that suffers. But what I want to say to them is there are people out there who really want to hurt you. There's politicians passing laws. You know, there's actual hate mongers. Focus your energy there. Uh, the fact that you're focusing your energy on trying to take down a comedian who, again, I would argue, is getting people used to the idea of talking about these issues, understanding these issues. Uh, I think that you're directing your energy 100 percent in the wrong place. And if you come after comedy, I hate to say it as a comedian, I have to say, guys, you got to let us joke about what we're going to joke about. 
It's our livelihood. It's our profession. It's what we love. And, and we have to take a stand. I'm sorry. Vito Gesualdi, thank you so much for joining me today.